Good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's episode of ERP. That's right, ERP, three little letters that stands for Elongate, Reposition, Pucker. That one needs no explanation. We're just going to graze right past that. Picking up where we last left off, the Devil's Advocates, having found their way to the capital city of Dragon Tail, had a meeting with King Rodrin Darafen. After a small attempt at a prank by the king, you were each addressed individually, ultimately resulting in the king introducing his wife, Mo's sister. A rather awkward dinner came to follow. Um, discussions were had about your previous endeavors. Uh, confrontation was had between Mo and Margaret Milner, now Darafent. Um, in which Margaret stated it's great that they're related, but Mo has not been in her life and is therefore a stranger to her. The king once again asked Quirin and the rest of you by extension to go south to the city of Rivermouth or nearby to attempt talks with another Goliath tribe. In the meantime, uh, having just received some form of uh, uh, communication in regards to a series of murders um, outside the city walls in the shanty of the town of the Sutton, the king asked you to go on the behalf of him, undercover, in order to perhaps uh, quell this problem as silently and stealthily <clears throat> as you could, which you did, with Alaster standing magnificently in the center of a large group of people saying, we are here, by the orders of the king. Backpedaling was done, as certain people tend to do. It was and, one time. <laughs> yeah, well, it was one time in 2012, and it's coming up for the rest of your life. Uh, a deception roll was made, and for the meantime, you seem to have fooled the townsfolk of Sutton uh, into either uh, ignorance, or perhaps you were drunk, or something along those lines, but a excuse was come up with. Discussions were had. Zane, you went to approach a, a number of uh, uh, drunk men, um, discussing with one of them in your uh, disguise uh, from Mask of Many Faces. You rolled three out of four of your rolls last week were natural ones. So with a natural one, despite your guys, uh, Zane, um, you were recognized. And much to, I think, the player's chagrin, the young girl, Avandra, from uh, Ashbor, has found you, standing next to you, and uh, telling her drunken father that she's going to go off with her friends. You all convened um, in a street in this uh, small shanty town of Sutton, with Avandra the there, uh, offering her services to assist you in finding who or what has killed 11 people in the shanty town of Sutton over the past few nights. So with that, Devil's Advocates, this is where we start. At this point, it's approximately, I'd say, with you guys sleeping in after the hangover you had well, with your revelry with the king, um, and you're meandering about uh, picking up armor and whatnot. I'd say it's probably about 2.30 in the afternoon. Oh, excuse me. Um, the town itself, once again, is is starting to pick up in terms of pace. Uh, as you're having this conversation, you notice more and more people seem to be uh, going about business. Um, and you can kind of uh, come to the conclusion that at the time of day, people are perhaps realizing they haven't quite accomplished as much as they would have liked to, and are now kind of going into uh, turbo completionist mode, uh, for lack of a better term. So, what would you like to do? I recall I'm chasing after Zaz. Yes, you are. That is right. So. Oh, yeah, you're still a... You are a cat. That is a good... I, I do have a note of that, actually. It says Kitty Chase. I was wondering what that meant, and now I recall. So, 
jump cut, star swipe, heart explosion, whatever. Heart explosion. I don't know. Heart explosion? <laughs> oh, let, me, <laughs> let me make a note of that. New spell, heart explosion. All the right. Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Sexy goblin heart explosion? Yeah. All right. So, uh, Quirin, you are still a kitty, correct? Yeah. You will be a kitty for approximately the next, I'd say, 15 to 20 minutes um, in regards to polymorph. Unless Zane decides to end the polymorph, I believe is how that works. Yep. I think Zane can end it on command. Um, Zaz, uh, if I recall, you were just hiding in the bushes. Yep. Um, being interesting. So at this point, I have to ask, Zaz, how are you hiding? What are you doing? Uh, describe the, like, what's around me immediately. So, Sutton itself is, um, a series of, uh, makeshift, I don't want to say shacks, but makeshift, uh, temporary, like, temporary lodgings for people as they begin building homes. Um, so you see a lot of, uh, kind of ramshackle, uh, shed type things, uh, kind of, um, off to your right, you see um, a house that the, the foundation is just kind of being dug, and there's a number of uh, uh, large strip logs sticking out uh, for those initial beams. Um, the road is, if you can call it that, it's more of a, a, an area of the ground that's just been uh, compressed by constant walking. There is a couple of bushes. Uh, it looks like people here have made an attempt to try and maintain a little bit of greenery. Um, many of them do seem to be uh, scratched or marked from uh, uh, wayward uh, axes or things that are being carried. Um, all in all, uh, think of it sort of like a, um, think of it as the startings of a construction site. Okay, so there's people kind of just like walking back and forth and such? People walking back and forth. You see people kind of uh, going to and fro with buckets of water, um, uh, strips of wood, uh, whatever uh, raw metals they may have. Uh, people going by in carts with whatever belongings they've decided to bring. Um, again, yeah, basically think of like a combination of the traffic you see on a construction site and um, with people moving in type thing. Everyone is very busy, though. Okay. Then um, I'll just be trying to like hide amongst the crowd and not really stand out while staying close in proximity. Okay. So, trying to blend in with the crowd. Yeah. Quirin. You are um, a cat. Sniffing him. Hunting him. Trying to find him. Okay. So, you're sniffing. You, you've designated sniffing. So, remind me, if does a cat have... Uh, I have the stat block on uh, D&D Beyond. Is that clear? Yes. Uh, yeah. Keen smell. Cat has advantage on wisdom, perception checks, or rely on smell. Okay. So, that's that's what I was going to ask, because I couldn't remember if it was if cats had that, but they do. So, Zaz. Going to get you to make a stealth check. Just a straight one. Um, it is rather busy, so people aren't really looking. Um, but you do kind of stand out, so we're going to make that a straight roll. And then, Quirin. You can make your perception check using the cat's uh, wisdom. Yeah. Perception check is three. That's all right. What the hell? What did you do? <laughs> S20 plus three equals two? There we go. Three. What? What the fuck is happening? What? What? <laughs> 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 this map there we go all right now I, it, I got it set out now so okay all right so roll your that's your first roll there we go 17 uh 17 zaz roll to 21 um hmm, hit 21 uh quirin you're looking for zaz and you kind you lock on to the smell of fungus for a split second. And despite the fact that your brain is now feline, something in there in your personality does connect fungus equals Zaz. And you kind of uh, sniff your way in that direction. And you kind of 
bump your head against one of the uh, the logs that I had mentioned in the construction site. As you look, you notice that perhaps this site has been sitting for a little too long without people doing much much work, and there's uh, quite a bit of fungus uh, growing uh, at the base of the part of the log that is um, inserted into the ground. You do not see Zaz. Zaz, for the most part, you're you're kind of doing that. Um, uh, you know that trick people do when uh, you're waving to someone and the bus goes by and you run with the bus. Oh yeah. You're kind of you're kind of doing that with walking people, just blending in. Um, you you are a ghost. I thought he was a druid. No, he's a ghost. What would you guys like to do, Quirin? You have found fungus. Zaz, you have found anonymity. Eat a mushroom, going back on the hunt. Make a constitution saving throw, please. Better than Quirin's. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah. Still a five. <laughs> uh, one second here. Mushrooms and cats. Let's see here. Okay, so yeah, cats. I, yeah, cats cannot have mushrooms. So, <laughs> um, cat. Yeah, mushrooms are not safe for cats. Okay, except for button mushrooms, which these were not. Um, yeah, you uh, you eat this mushroom, you kind of hop up, and suddenly you just get that. But you're a cat, so it's kind yeah. of like a. <laughs> and yeah, and you begin to vomit. Uh, Zaz, what are you doing? Just stealthing. Just stealthing around? All right. Just stealthing away. So as you're stealthing around, Zaz, I'm going to ask you to make a perception check, please. You got it. The rest of you be on deck. 17. 17. Okay. Um, as you're sort of stealthing around... Uh, your eye falls upon a, uh, a separate section of the city, uh, an area you haven't been, where you notice that um, in one of the alleyways between uh, what looks like two completed construction uh, projects, um, in that alleyway, it looks like somebody has taken a board and boarded up uh, the way in, um, as if someone's trying to make a makeshift barrier. Okay, so they boarded up the entryway. This little like kind of impromptu entryway. Yeah, it's well, it's it's an it's it's an alley between two places, but it looks like somebody's tried to block it off with wood or uh, uh, whatever they could find for the most part. Are there any gaps that it kind of be through, or is it just like a it's, solid wall? It's more or less. Think of like um, think of like a uh, uh, construction sawhorse. You know, it's it's not an actual barricade. It's more of a stay out. This is a warning type thing. Mm. Very easy to see through and get over if you so choose. Oh, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. I'll go take a look. Alright. Make your way over. Um, as you, you stealth your way through the crowd, um, and Quirin, as you're uh, vomiting profusely, um, as you make your way through the crowd, uh, you notice that it begins to thin um, as you get uh, uh, closer and closer to this area until eventually... You look around as you stand in front of this barricade, and it is eerie silent. Um, there doesn't seem to be anyone else around. The two buildings that stand in front of you both appear to be done. Um, uh, rather uh, rather freshly done, actually. There's still the smell of sawdust, um, the smell of uh, crushed stone. Um, oh, excuse me. Other uh, building smells, uh, smells of, uh, of metal and whatnot. But I can notice that it's still pretty fresh, like they've just recently finished. Yeah, to the point that the uh, the earth around it looks mm -hmm. still rather uh, rather freshly moved. It hasn't okay. settled. There has a lot of growth. Um, what's the one? Give me a sec, sorry. I'm gonna yeah, no cast. If it's that fresh, I'm gonna cast Pass Without Trace. Okay. So that'll give you a plus it. ten, right? Yep. Okay. All right, so are you going to walk into the alley, or are you going to peer in? What would you like to do? After casting the spell, I'll walk in. Okay, and you're doing so stealthily, so go ahead and make a stealth check. 
Give me a sec. Yep, for sure. Oh, excuse me. 22. 22. You, um... You just blend in with the shadows. Um, you're not too familiar, um, with the building style of, uh, of this realm, but you're fairly sure that the way that the two, uh, very low-pitched roofs here overhang each other, um, isn't quite right. Um, because as you walk into the alley, it is, it is very dark. Um, after you get maybe, I'd say maybe 10 to 15 feet in, um, mm -hmm. what little light was coming in has kind of vanished, and it is getting fairly dark. Um, eventually, it does appear as if the, uh, the alleyway does end mm -hmm. with uh, sort of an, um, what you call it, almost like a, a, a dog leg left of one of the buildings and the other building being, being pressed right up against it. Maybe there's a three inch gap letting in just the smallest amount of light in to the end of this alley. Hmm. Very cluttered, very tightly packed houses here. Okay. So with it getting darker, am I able to see things better? Because of dark, dark vision. vision, correct? Yeah. So dark vision, yes, in a way. So you're going to think of it as someone turning down the brightness, but turning up the contrast. Mm -hmm. So dark vision isn't black and white. So you do um, see things a little clearer, but you don't see color. Um, so looking around in this uh, in this area, you do notice that a number of boards on the back of the uh, the back of the alley mm -hmm. are stained darker. Okay, like a splatter, like a splatter pattern. Oh, okay. Does it look like actual staining, or is it like blood? What's your passive perception? Passive? 16. 16, yeah. Um, you can tell that this was not intentional staining. Um, with dark vision, you can't really tell the color, but it if you were to hazard a guess by the, the spray, um, this is probably blood. Um, you've seen sprays of blood before quite a lot mm -hmm. actually um this looks like someone who met a fairly grisly end but there's no body there is no body here no okay. um i'm able to i'm able to like progress more or there's a three the little like it kind of narrows to that little gap you're saying right yeah it's a very narrow uh edge here but for the most part um with a passive of 16 by the looks of it, there has been footfalls here. Uh, you do see some drag marks. Kind of now seeing the blood spl uh, splatter, you look down, you notice that uh, a portion of the stone acting as the foundation also has the same kind of uh, um, uh, viscera spray. Uh, it looks like this was a crime scene that has since been cleared away, and you can kind of come to the conclusion that the barricade was put up just to just to keep people out of that particular spot. Okay. Hmm. Not only anything else of uh, note, I probably have to roll a perception for that, wouldn't I? Investigation. Investigation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nine. Nine. Um. <laughs> It's interesting. Uh, sorry, if... real quick. Did map yes. tool just disconnect? I, I got a server has disconnected notification. Well, that's What's weird. going on? I just did mine. Oh, that's odd. I'm good. Um, yeah, it looks like it was just mine. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no worries. Um, you do find what looks like a uh, a snake-sized worm. Um, long dead. Looks like it's been severed, cut in half. Um. Looks like it had almost like a lamprey like uh like mouth at one end uh it's kind of gross but it, it's dead it's kind of dried up as worms dry up you know the on the pavement after having the sun comes out but yeah that's pretty much it okay then i'll start making my way back for where we're, everyone else is 
All right. So, Quirin, you've been puking. What are you doing? I have now forgotten about Zaz. And okay. I have no idea where I am. You do not. Okay, so, are you attempting to go anywhere? Yeah. Okay. Let's just go off in a random direction. Okay, so, I'll get back to you. <laughs> Mo, Zane, and Alaster. You stand there now. Um... With little Evandra looking up and going, okay, so let's solve a murder. Yes, um, so how do we want to take and do this? Do we want to get a group of people? Do we want to, I don't know, because if, if we could get a group of people distracted, watching something, entertained by something, then, you know, Evander could work her ways in the shadows and, you know, just, you know, search through people's heads, as young children do. No, just me. I, I was trying to be sarcastic. Don't. I... It's not a terrible idea. Are you suggesting that we do some sort of dance or, or or something that would get a large group of people? I did. Spend... Well, he's not saying dance. I we could, I could do some street magic or something. Can I you do did. that? Well, I mean, I can, I can transform. I can, I can do various things. I did spend the good part of my life as an entertainer. Yeah, but we're not going to have a gladiator fight in the middle of the street. The... Yes. Yeah. Do you think killing people is all I know how to do? I don't know. We've never really Zane looks about back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> From what I've seen, you know how to kill people quite well. We were occasionally charged with entertaining people in various ways that dangerous but not always lethal that's, that's really fascinating how did how what did you do some people were taught how to juggle swords eh i let's just say there's a lot of money in the market of having uh personal entertainers that um you know you, you don't really pay you were a concubine What's that? It's someone who sells the body for money. Don't worry about it. Oh, kind of like a, a personal necromancer. Um, Why do you need a personal necromancer? To sell bodies for money. D You'll understand when you're older. No, I understand now. I'm just being smart. Hmm. I like this one. She's great. You shouldn't. You don't know what you're talking about. Um, okay, back to Mo selling his doodle for money. Um, I... I've yet to hear any any information about you not being a whore. I love it. <sighs> How... We're to the point where the word doodle has apparently become slang in this world. <laughs> doodle is canon. <sighs> the doodle boys <laughs> and it's not and we're not talking about trying <laughs> all right so um we've established that mo can maybe do a strip tease in the middle of town is that and then you can do some like card tricks or something um what do i got uh but we don't all have to do something. Oh, excuse me. Oh, now I feel left out. Um, yeah, so that's the plan, or are we just, you want to just walk in a direction, try another group of people, bring the little child along, and then pay a dad some money to maybe get out of this slum? So as he says that, 
all of a sudden you all hear a scream from the other side of town. Oh. I guess that's our cue. Oh. Duty calls. Okay, Start so you guys heading off in that direction. Okay. So whoever is leading you three, or four I should say with Evandra, go ahead and make a uh, perception check. Yeah, I'll do it. Alright, Zaz, you hear this as well. Mm -hmm. As you're heading back. Okay. What would you like to do? I'm gonna make for the noise. Okay. Go ahead and make a perception check to figure out which direction. Oh you're boy, going. a three. <laughs> okay. So Alastor starts running out of town. Um, just like the other direction. I 15. Zaz, you're able to pinpoint and you head uh, start heading in that direction. Mo and Zane, you watch as Alastor just heads out. Yes, Zaz, sorry. Uh, do I still have to roll another stealth check to kind of make my way through without being noticed? If you'd like to, yes. I would. All right. 21. Okay, 21. You succeed. You. Uh, Zane and Mo, Alastor's just taken off. What are you, what are you two doing? He'll realize uh, eventually. Okay. So I'm on my own now. Heading out of town. Yes. Welcome to the party. <laughs> <laughs> He's like me when I hear something. I, I go to the opposite direction. <laughs> okay. So Mo, Mo and Zane, I'll say you two are able to figure it out. Um, Zaz, you reach there first, and what you find is about to be covered. Quirin, you head through the city weaving between feet, just heading in a random direction. You eventually come to um, sort of a, I don't want to say a makeshift town square, but an opening where nothing has really been planned. And you see another cat just staring at you. Full on dumbass mode. So Quirin, <laughs> knowing what dumbass dumb mode is, mode. kind of does the the kitty flop onto his side, starts rolling on his back. And at that moment, Polymorph wears off as Quirin just poof, turns back into Quirin on his back in full dumbass mode, rolling back and forth, to which several women around you, Quirin, scream loudly. You're lying on your back. What would you like to do? Gonna slowly get up. Yup, yup. Uh, uh, yep. <laughs> Zaz, you come out of you kind of peek around the corner just in time to see a circle of people forming around Queer and getting up, dusting himself off. Uh, Zane and Mo, you follow a few moments later uh, with Evandra, obviously. Alaster. Yes. You run for maybe a good five minutes. And eventually you go, wait a minute. <sighs> the city is gone. And you turn around and you see the houses behind you. You're like, no, it would make more sense that the scream was back there. What would you like to do? Huh. It's just... Hmm. Got myself into quite a pickle, haven't I? Um... Well, it's time to see if I have any... hidden talents. Um... Here we go. I'm going to try and cast message, even though I don't actually know that spell. Um, okay. Is that a thing? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's gonna be on a second here. Hold on. <laughs> Zane, if you can hear me, please respond. I seem to have teleported out of the city, and I'm lost and afraid. few moments go by, by silence you swear on the wind you hear dumbass <laughs> no you don't but no <laughs> say, um, Jerry Smith <laughs> yeah <Loser. laughs> uh, no you stand there and you're like did I do it you didn't do it I'll turn around and start retracing my steps and then get about uh, a third of the way back and I'd like to make a perception check uh, just to see what is kind of around. It's kind of kind of kind of lost my train of thought. So I kind of want to see what. Uh... Okay, go ahead and make your perception check. I put 20. That's supposed to be two. 
Um, okay, so well, nine. I can do uh, nine. Um, it appears to be some form of planes, and in front of you, there appears to be a city. All right, I believe I'm on the right track. <laughs> I'll just keep going. Okay, so the rest of you who didn't roll in that one, Quirin is just getting up. Zaz, you're still in the shadow. Mo, Zane. Zane, you still ha um, have your elven man uh, disguise on, correct? Yeah. Okay, so you three are visible. You're not hiding. Uh, what would you guys like to do? i march over to Zane. Look him square in the eyes. Next time? That? I'm gonna motion to all of him. Not the kitty. What would you prefer? Not a kitty. Maybe something more ferocious next time, Zane? Like, it's a mushroom. Know. Disgusting. I'm gonna show up behind Quirin. <laughs> Just like, kind of, again, that turn around, fuck, kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Pour it together. The crowd is looking at you all. What would you like to do? Aren't we supposed to stay incognito? You, um... Well, uh, Evandra kind of ratted us out. Hi. Oh, yes, Hi. I remember seeing you. Okay. Anybody find anything interesting in their adventures? Uh, yeah, I found a crime scene. That's a start? Or at least I found a spot where someone died. I'm assuming it's a crime. I don't think anyone died there of natural causes. Usually not in an alleyway. Hey, heart disease is the silent killer and it can strike anywhere. <laughs> Saying. Alaster, you make it back to town. Make a make an investigation check. I'm real good at this. I know you are. <laughs> Apparently, I am. Eighteen. Eighteen. Um, you kind of squint real hard, and you can see. A gray figure uh, that's taller than everyone else standing next to what appears to be a rather tall elven gentleman. Oh, look, I found them. Okay, um, I'll <laughs> head over there. <laughs> For those who weren't aware of what I was saying, yes, he did find them. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, but okay. Um, I'm going uh, to walk up to Zane. Zane, how come you didn't how come you didn't respond to my message? The what message? You know the one I sent you, because that I was out of town and I was lost and scared I must have teleported or something. But yeah, I, I sent you a message, you didn't respond. Zane's looking at Alaster with like confusion and disgust. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't that how you do? You just kinda of think of the person and you just say whatever you want and then they get it and then it sends back, right? No. I mean, no. I don't know, I just I thought I'd give it a shot, see if I could do it. Baz, can you show us where the uh, scene was? Hold on, please. Hold on. Uh, okay. Over here. It's not a leader. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm curious what Zess was trying to make hold on for, but all right. Um, you lead them back. It's not it's not a far distance. Um, the four of you, uh, the five of you, I should say, with Alondra, obviously. Um, you see the same alleyway, boarded up, rather dark. Um, everyone but Mo would have dark vision, correct? Oh, and uh, Quirin doesn't. Does yep, it? casting light on my shield. Right. Okay. So, you bypass the the quote-unquote barricade rather easily. Um, the alley itself, pretty compact. It's maybe about five feet wide. Um, so for, like, 
Zane and Zaz to walk side by side. Maybe if they kind of scoot. Uh, but for Mo and Alaster and Quirin just due to all your armor, mm. uh, not happening. This is a single file endeavor. Yep. I'll go last. Okay. So, who's at the front? I'll lead. Okay. So, Zaz is at the front. You, uh, you lead them to the end. Um, you point out uh, the viscera on the wall, which with the light spell now on Quirin's shield, you can clearly see um, what was once red is kind of now fading to that dull brown color that blood becomes. Um, yep, from what you can tell, this was quite the uh, quite the Tarantino film. Uh, that spray is pretty far up. It's not quite as as thick at the top as it is the bottom, but it does go up. Kids, I've being what I did as a Jada a Deja for almost twenty yeah. years. I I've seen a lot of shit. Can I try and investigate and try and hazard some sort of guess what this what could have done this or what couldn't have if that um, makes can I try I'm, tr I'm trying to I'm trying to like narrow narrow my bases if that's all I can do yeah yeah you know what that is a good justification you have seen a lot of death and you have seen a lot of dramatic murders I'll let you make a medicine check with advantage I was gonna do a medicine check as well to see yes. what kind of thing you know spews that much blood and how <laughs> right Sorry, I had to sneeze. Bars. So, so you two will make both make a medicine check, but you're going to be looking for different things. Yeah. Um, seven. Seven. 25. Jesus Christ. Um, by Paylor, I mean. Um, <laughs> seven. Mo, you know it's. You sit there for a second. You think of all the, the grisly deaths you've seen, and, uh, none of them really ended against the wall. Uh, the blood sprays were more contained, and even if you did, say, lop off someone's arm or something like that, it wasn't so much a spray as it was a, a pool. Um, okay. Yeah, this, this like, you kind of think, and you're thinking back, like, I don't remember anything really being, like, quite so Andy warhol You know, <laughs> like, uh, Jackson Pollock, I should say. Just, just splattered. You don't so, recall. Although I can't recall, am I getting a sav like a, a vibe of like, just savage force? With a seven, I'm going to say that the most you can, uh, uh, most you can come to a conclusion about is that whatever died here, died in a way that you haven't seen something killed in that way before. Okay. Okay. Queer it. Yeah. Grant did make his, uh, 25. Um. What you can tell, Quirin, with that kind of medicine check is with that kind of blood spray like that, um, the spray of blood probably wasn't pumped out via a natural organ. It, this wasn't somebody severed an artery and the blood squirted. This was a case of someone ripping or tearing something and pulling it upwards, causing a blood spray. Um, just due to the color, you do recognize this as uh, a humanoid blood. Um, a number of different uh, races, uh, some do have different colored blood, but this one is consistent with the blood typically found in, uh, excuse me, humans, elves, Half elves, half orcs. Um, it's your typical uh, ruby fluid of life yep. um, type thing. Uh, the other thing you can um, uh, you can kind of uh, dissertain here, uh, Quirin, is uh, the blood. Uh, whereas the other one, there was pools of blood in that other crime scene. Um, there is no pool here. Um, whatever died here probably wasn't actually kept here. 
very long, at least. You know, the bodies bleed, and this body did not bleed other than what's on the wall. I'm going to relate that back to everybody. Okay. Hmm. So at least we have now a basis for what we're looking for. Something large, powerful, and... Disturbing what they... work. Yeah. So wait, hmm. we're looking for something large and powerful that's not us. As a note, as Alastor says, large and powerful, Quirin, you kind of turn back and see that both of Alastor's shoulders are rubbing on either side of the walls. Oh. Perhaps not large, then. Hmm. But savage, and... Um, Maybe small. Mo, what... What sort of beasts live out around Dragon Tail? Like, uh, I, I, I'm assuming there's, like, bandits and goblins and, and um, you know, those sorts of things, but is there uh, anything particular to this area that... DM? Nature check! Oh, that's actually pretty... Oh, no. Fifteen. Fifteen. The city of Dragon Tail is the first city of Dragon Tail Coast. It is located in the northwest corner um, of the quote unquote territory, continent, etc. Um, protected by a range of mountains known as the Iron Golem Peaks. Uh, the Iron Golem Peaks are difficult to cross, but not impossible. Um, obviously, as settlers had come to the coast. Um, originally somehow so though the uh the high grove in the area um is protected by the iron golem peaks and contains your typical uh flora and fauna uh that you would find in an, a fantasy setting of goblins and obviously purple worms and uh, rust monsters etc things cross over those mountains whether out of curiosity or escape. Um, things cross over them and come from them on occasion that are new. So, for cities that are on the edge of the Iron Golem Peaks, there's not necessarily ever a uh, uh, ever a dismissal of an idea of whatever creature could have stumbled into their domain. Okay, it's it's like um like a border town. It's kind of hard to keep track of your. Um, yeah, it's it's the yeah. idea that you know we know what's usually here, but sometimes something else gets here. You know, we can't rule that out. Type thing. I don't know of anything that does this, but a lot of. A lot of things can't traverse the mountains, but the things that do usually can do that because they're not uh, helpless or dumb. Quirin, that's more your area. I, like I said, there are... You have to remember that we are also facing many things that are not from this world. Yeah. And Quirin, is... um, you would know as well, you're aware that your village was on the edge of where the Iron Golem Peaks actually end, and you were uh, you were on a trade route to a northern nation that you don't know the name of. The people of this city have come to learn that the, sometimes the best course of action is to sometimes assume that you don't know what... Uh, where everything came from kind of accept the fact that there are things you don't know which probably makes the king very angry for now we should focus on this uh we have Vandra here and i have yes. no doubt that you guys wanted to 
make some sort of display and she's going to walk around and gaze into people's minds. So I'm correct on that. Can... Oh, go ahead, Cor. So I'm just asking if I'm correct on that assumption. Yeah. Evandra, you can only co uh, communicate, read, understand living things, right? You that can't... depends. I was gonna say, you can't learn anything by being here and touching this crime scene, can you? Maybe. If I had a physical piece of something. Can I? Oh, uh, somebody taste the blood. Does it taste like blood? Yes. <laughs> Quirin doesn't even taste the blood. He just looks at the last one like, it's blood. <laughs> I ate it as a cat. Good. <laughs> Well then, why don't, before we leave, everybody take a look, and let's see if they miss something when they were cleaning up. It's hard to clean efficiently if uh, your ground is not entirely sand. Um, I'll leave it at that. I hate sand. Cool. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> I know where you were going. Do not! Can I, can I just... Uh, Roll an investigation check. Just yeah, go ahead. Around. Nine. There appears to be some kind of worm on the ground. It's kind of dried up and cut in half. Oh, that's the weird worm that Zaz. Yeah, Zaz has done it before. Yeah. It's Can I just kind of inspect it? Yeah, go ahead. It's um, it's a uh, kind of gross. So it's like looks a... like it's like maybe I'd say eight inches long, um, probably about <laughs> half an inch in diameter. Um, again, that lamprey-like mouth at the end, uh, kind of dried up and flattened, um, seems That's... to have been severed in half. I... Zane, is this a parasite? Or, like, a... in It's not a worm. It's worm-ish. But I have a feeling this shouldn't be here. Damn, would I know what it is? Can I make a check or something? Yeah, make a, uh... <laughs> make an arcana check. Nice. Twenty-six! Nat twenty! <laughs> it's a nat twenty. So yeah. The turn tables. Have turned. Um. Huh, okay, and at twenty. All right. Um. So looking at it, Zane, and being told that you, you know, uh, you, hearing the line, well, it's obviously not a worm. Is it some kind of parasite? You look at it with uh, a different eyes, a uh, different set of eyes than everyone else has. You're not looking at it so much as an insect, but as something arcane something bizarre and as you look at it um you kind of peer at the side where it looks like it was severed and it doesn't actually look like it was cut it looks like it was pulled out of a socket and at the end of it appears like almost like a, a dried white casing um, think of when you pluck a hair out. Uh, and you kind of look at it, and you're reminded of an entry in a book you once read about something called a Medusa that has snakes for hair. Um, but thinking back to that, this isn't a snake, it's a worm. And you kind of, again, have that photographic like Jimmy Neutron brain blast thing. Oh, and you remember flipping through pictures of like this bestiary that you were studying. And you remember seeing the Medusa and then there's kind of a box that says, um, often confused with. Um, and you see uh, things like uh, Illithid and Hag are the two that stand out to you. Sorry, illithid and what? Hag. H-A-G. Okay. 
typically confused with uh, creatures that have some form of serpentine hair. Hmm. Evander, can you get any readings off touching this? She kind of looks for a second. She looks at it. She kind of wins and She goes, I don't think I want to. Fair enough. Kind of gross. Are there any, uh, are there any people that are, like, looking at a bunch of random dudes in an alleyway with a little girl? Because that seems a bit sus to me. Actually, no, um, because that doesn't exist in this world, because fuck you. <laughs> um, no, um, the uh, you guys noted this as you came up to the alleyway. The particular area of the city that you're in um, is kind of almost deathly still quiet. Um, you get the like, feeling people are avoiding this area intentionally. Oh, okay. Not like, not like we missed the you know, the dinner bell or something, and everybody's gone to one central location. No, but... there's almost like a, a, a perimeter of stay the fuck away from this area. Someone was brutally murdered here. Ah. Is the, the murder the only reason why this place is uh, um, about as quiet as a cemetery? You don't know. I'm looking at Vandra. Oh, um, Vandra? I'm asking her. I'm not. She, she kind of looks. She goes, oh, I don't know. My dad wouldn't tell me what happened to the bodies. He said, he said that it's much worse than anything we saw in Ashbourne. Hmm. Do you know of anybody that was the first person to find them, or? She kind of thinks for a second. Goes, um, I think there's some kind of like neighborhood cleanup crew. She's kind of tilting her head. She it, she looks like she's searching for the right word. I'm trying to remember what they call what Dad said they were. They, he said they're trying to act as the guards, but nobody really respects them because they're what was the word he used dinguses um i know that they i know that old hilda uh is part of it but she's a little crazy well let's see do we find crazy. a dingus or do we go with a crazy person crazy is better than nothing Okay. Um, the way. Oh, I don't know where old Hilda lives. I just know who she is. Hmm. Well, it looks like we're gonna have to do some asking. Yeah. What are you guys just doing? I'm gonna unwedge myself from this alleyway and try and get out. <laughs> Um, have you ever watched a cat try and get its way out of a paper bag? Yes. You do that backwards wiggle. Okay. Yeah. Damn small sides. <laughs> Stand oh, no, sideways. Kind of... I'm trying, but I'm wedged. I've got these shoulders. I also have shoulders. <laughs> the question is, do you have arms? <laughs> My sword requires arms, okay? <laughs> you eventually make your way out of the alley. Um, it looks like the perimeter of do not go here extends maybe about 15, 20 feet away from this. Um, and a number of the construction projects um, that had started in this area um, are on halt. There doesn't seem to be much, uh, much happening about them. Where would you guys like to go? 
that's a great question. Um, ethereal voice in my head. Um, so, You're welcome. Uh, we've, is there some sort of place where this militia, this dingus militia hangs out in? Um... She kind of looks like kind of looks off to the side. She goes, "No, I think, I think they're ju they just kind of stand around and wait for someone to do something wrong." My dad says they think that they're guards and they're pretending to be guards, but nobody respects their authority because they can't really do anything. Um, can you usually they're really the only ones that carry weapons. Do they dress a certain way, or she kind of she goes. Oh yeah, they wear um uh it's like a circle of cloth and it goes over one shoulder and it kind of hangs diagonally across the front of them. Like a sash? That's it. It's a sash. It's so, a it's a green sash. Yeah. So look for people with sashes, ask for Hilda. We're hunting down the neighborhood watch association. Yeah. But a neighborhood watch association that no one gives a shit about. Yep. Or we could do it the fun way, and Mel and I could have. Remember when we were doing that wrestling thing? We could do that in the middle of town, of of the place. And when they come out to stop us, then we can ask them all collectively, because nobody gives a shit about them anyway. So you know who cares? And I try something first before you do the whole uh, wrestling thing. Sure. I mean, I suppose. You're not going to do the thing where you touch us and we die for a couple hours, are, are you? Not you, but uh, just wait. I'm going to walk away from the group, try and give a lot of distance, and then go and talk to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's times like this. Like, most of the time, just, just an aside here, most of the time it makes me kind of sad that we're all not sitting at a table together. But there's times like this where I can be silent during these conversations and sit here comfortably knowing that you guys can't see my expressions. <laughs> <laughs> because that was just a roller coaster of, of what the fuck faces from me. So, <laughs> just, uh, huh, okay. So, all right. Um, yeah, you head off. Uh, you uh, you see a number of people. You see mainly humans. With like maybe out of four people, you see two humans, one dwarf, and a halfling. I'm gonna go try um, and talk to a dwarf. Talk to a dwarf. Um, yeah, you come across a male dwarf. He's a uh, uh, kind of uh, standing in front of what looks like the beginnings of a house. Um, he look. He's uh, sawing a piece of wood. Um, with what looks like a long blade at the end of a end of a stick, and he's kind of grumbling to himself. He goes, "Fucking god, blasted foreign saws!" Uh, kind of looks up me. at you and goes, "I, uh, I am new to this city, and uh, one of them, uh, what are they called? I, he was wearing a green sash, took my bag from me, and I'm wondering where do I go to talk to them or." Pick it up. Because he was just kind of a hey. dick. Hey. Yeah, it sounds like them. Uh, <laughs> do you not know what they're called? No, I just kind of walked into the city, then he was in my face yelling at me for nothing. Eh. Hey. Hey, Gertrude! You hear someone cut from the other side of the construction project. Ah, uh, yeah? This big guy here says one of the fuckers from the Sutton squad took his bag. Get the fuck out. Yeah, no. Um So he kind of pokes his uh, pokes his head out like over top of what he's cutting and he points down the road. He goes, if you go down that way, mm -hmm. um eventually you're going to uh, uh come to what looks like the biggest construction project. Uh really big and wide and long, uh pretty deep hole, looks like uh, they're building a cellar. Um, they're next to that. By the way, that's going to be a tavern. We all, we all need that. Um, yeah, no, they're next to that. And the, uh, uh, it's kind of, uh, it's 
looks almost like a kind of thinks for a second. This looks kind of like a, a long triangle, pointy thing. It's not very well made. Long triangle, okay. Yeah, um, they really don't uh, have any authority to take uh, your bag, and judging by uh, the look of you, I'd say if you uh, dragged a couple out to the square and uh, roughed them up a bit, no one would, uh, no one really look twice. That is a very good thing to know. Hey, thank you for your time. Uh, here, let me go to my point purse and take out a gold coin. Hey, well, it's a good thing they didn't take your purse, eh? Just not with my bag. I'm gonna readjust the backpack on my back and walk off. Yeah, as you walk off, you hear, you Goliath's carrying two bags. <laughs> Just <laughs> goes back and you can kind of hear the <laughs> you kind of peer back for a second and this, this saw that he's using, Quirin, um, is really flimsy looking and he is fucking struggling with it. It's almost comical. He's like got it stuck in the woods. What the fuck? Alright, so you're heading down the street. Back to the group. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, while Quirin goes off on this little questioning adventure, the rest of you, dare I ask, what conversation was had? I'm I'm drawing a picture of a dragon in the dirt with foot. Make a performance check. Ooh. Comes up more looking like a lizard folk trying to eat a really <laughs> harsh sandwich. Okay. Oh. Eleven. Eleven. You draw bold and brash by Squidward. Ooh. Better than the last time. Getting better. Just a note for everyone else. He's not. <laughs> so you're all just standing there quietly? Is that what's going on? Yeah, I, I guess. Them, but I'm drawing a dragon. Yeah, or attempting to. All right. Avandra's kind of watching you draw the dragon. Just no, go to the. Is <sighs> that you draw a cobalt? I don't even know. Query, you walk up at this point. What did I miss? He's drawing a kobold. It's a dragon. Look, it wings, tails, It's head. neither. It looks like this squid from this cartoon little booklet they hand out. Is that from the same series as that really messed up wizard? They breeds it a bunch. I'm not putting Cartoon Network in this world. <laughs> I that immediately. immediately. I immediately regret that. I'm gonna have to now. <laughs> All right. I uh, found out where their main headquarters is. Apparently, there is literally nothing they can do to us, and we could literally just drag them out and beat the shit out of them if we want. So that's the plan. Cool. Let's go. Lead the way. That's not the plan. It's something we can do. In the start walking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're heading to uh, the area where the tavern is? The long triangle, yep. Okay. Um, you see what he means uh, by the long triangle? Um, it looks like they've taken two pieces of wood and, like, made, like, the mouth of the building, and then it slowly gets thinner to the back and meets a point. And then there's, like, boards that are put on top of it. It's, it's a very strange building to try and describe, but think of if someone took a tent and made it a lot shorter and then laid it on its back. <laughs> if that makes sense? Yep. Okay, yeah. And uh, there's no front, and inside you see, um, it looks like there's like almost like a counter, like a, a, like a booth at a fair, and uh, there's just two guys sitting in there uh, with... Uh, with very rusty, shoddy-looking swords sitting on a bench, just kind of looking back and forth at people. I'm gonna stop a little bit beforehand. 
All right, uh, Alastair, right? That whole wrestling thing, was that like a fake persona you had going on? What? What? Al Alastair? A yes. fake persona? Well, you keep saying Platinum, the talent of the Platinum Dragon, blah, blah, blah. Did you give a backstory to that fake character? That's me. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, the wrestler has a fake backstory that you can go and tell to those people to talk about, you know, something terrible that's happening in Sutton. That way, the tiny girl can walk around with you and touch people's hands, saying she was scared or blah de blah. Oh, that's a good idea. Can you do that? So you want me? But I thought I wasn't supposed to say what we were really doing. You're not. Fake backstory. He's. I think what Quirin is trying to say is that he wants you to. We're going to come up with a story of something horrible that you. Saw. Witnessed or were part of, yes. Yeah, and you're going to go and tell that to. Excuse me, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> this is Mo, by the way. That's hey. completely in character. Hey, thank you, Mo. That was that, um, that was a good one. Sorry. Look about sausage. Uh, breakfast isn't agreeing with me. Um, you're going to tell it to them, and you need to somehow incorporate Evandra so that she has a reason to be there. And while this is going on, she's touch their hands and read them and uh you also need to have a reason to get out maybe maybe quirin can turn you into a fart cloud or kill you i cannot why do you keep saying i can turn people into fart clouds that is ass was that I, you two were right beside each other i couldn't see who cast this the spell he used it on me twice um, well, from my perspective, it looked like you used it on yourself. Excuse me? Yes. I'm no expert, but I read this story once about someone who um, had to infiltrate an evil wizard's palace um, as, like, an employee. Um, but he had to go to, uh, go to like, a, a, a makeup artist, like an actor, to change how he looks because he was so recognizable as a hero. Um, and I'm... I just want to suggest maybe um, uh, a Laster in his shiny armor doesn't uh, wear the shiny armor because it's mm. recognizable. It's, it's what I've been saying, but... Evandra, can you promise me that I'm not going to be eaten by anything purple or large or have lots of talons or sharp teeth if I take my armor off? No. It's not happening. Don't worry. I can make you look like a um, a different person. All right, we whatever. Do it. Should Just... we make him look old? Sickly? No, make me look beautiful but different. A different beautiful. War paint? Zane, what what what's what looks beautiful to you? What's your um make me look different but nice? Does the last have any facial hair? No. Uh n no, you not. You guys just had a fresh shave. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. So Zane, also you have no facial hair. Yeah, I I know that. Yeah, <laughs> just just saying. <laughs> My own character. I know he doesn't have <laughs> facial hair. He will grow a mustache. <laughs> so I, I don't know what to do. Alright, I'll be the guinea pig. Whatever you feel like, I'll work with it, I guess. I said I don't know what to do. Um, I may have something. All right. Um, okay. I've never used this before, so uh, stick with me. Don't kill me, please. Oh, Jesus. Just give me a second. Uh, <laughs> All right. I'm 
Bit of water. Down the rabbit hole we go. <laughs> gonna put my hand on his shoulder. Okay. You ready? Regretfully, yes. Same death. Okay. You're dead again. <sighs> then I'm just gonna start stripping his armor and shoving it into his bag. <laughs> With the uh, removing uh, of the armor. Okay. Uh, Zane and Zaz, what are you two doing as Quirin and Mo are stripping Dedalaster? Looking on at the madness. I, I I kick I kick Alaster's foot to see if he does anything. <laughs> Just gently, but So Quirin, as you get the breastplate off, because you guys are just so wise in your choices. Um <laughs> As you're doing that, you hear, I, I, wait, wait, wait a minute. And Zane and Zaz, you two look as the two individuals holding rusty swords, wearing green sashes, are climbing over the, uh, the little, uh, like, banister in front. And they come running up and they, I, no, stop that. Okay, it's okay, I'm a doctor, I'm a doctor. He's done this before. We just, uh, no, this is a robbery. No, no, no. Hey, hey, everyone. They're trying to rob this man. And everyone just kind of looks and mm, carries on with their day. I'm just going to look at it and whenever you have an, a chance, do it. Evandra is going to kind of sneak around beside the one that isn't talking, who's holding a sword. He's kind of back. He looks a little nervous. And they're, they're still talking. They're like, no, no, step back. We have healers. All right, all right. I'll step back. At this point, you've noticed that Evandra has grabbed the other one's hand and goes, Mister, it's okay. He falls asleep standing up sometimes. They're just making sure he doesn't hurt himself on his armor. Oh, can anyone, uh, can anyone confirm that? I just told you. We were trying to tell you. What's it called, then? It's some sort of condition falls unconscious. Don't really understand it. It has a well, really he, He's a doctor. Name. He's a doctor. He should know. You What's do, it called? You truly really want to know what it's called? That's all I'm asking. Well, every once in a while, he goes into a narcoleptic state, which puts him into a state like this. We have to get his clothing, his armor, everything off, so that way he does not crush himself while breathing. Say that again in common. That was in common. Now can I go back to helping him? Evandra kind of pulls him. Mister, it's okay. He's not going to steal his face. And at this point, the one that she's holding kind of turns and looks at her wide-eyed as Evandra's just got, like, the death stare. He's not. You don't want to see that again, do you? I, uh... I think we need to, um... Healing of faces? I think we need to go. I was like, right. Snap get him up. Snap Lake. Blaster, you fucking sit back up. <gasps> He's fine. I told you not to kill me! Oh, what? Uh, I, he uh, comes out of it really strange sometimes, don't worry. Alright. <laughs> well, um... I'm gonna go. They kind of uh, you! Walk Come out. here! Uh, I, I don't know what... Um, what's the plan? What's the plan? Um, uh, you! With the... Come here, you! Kind of... They're slowly backing away. Just kind of like chicken shit backing away. And there's kind of some people watching them back away. Like, yeah, real good guards you are, huh? I said, come here! At this point, they're just kind of looking at you, like they're they're even moving back faster. Eventually, one kind of hits their their little shack, it just kind of rolls over it and falls in. A crowd now is forming, and I'll start freaking out. And <laughs> okay, rolling around, just fucking losing your shit. <laughs> Don't worry, this again. is completely normal. He does this all the time. <laughs> Zane, are you still in uh? Are you still in disguise? 
<laughs> yes. Okay. Did you you use disguise self, correct? Um, yes. What's the duration of disguise self? Isn't it about an hour? I think it's an hour. Probably an hour. So at this point, Zane, you kind of like hold hold your hand up to wipe your nose, you look down, and your hand's purple. Okay. Like, uh oh. Vandra's like, it's okay. He goes into a nerkalaptic state. Almost got She it. looks back. Balkara! Asmodeus! Honestly, I was thinking more like Whitey having a seizure from Eight Crazy Nights. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> I was I was going for demonic possession, but I think that's about the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, there's no Adam Sandler in this world either. What the great bard Adam Sandler? <laughs> no, the Adam name of is... Sandler still. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Adam. <laughs> Sir Adam of Sir Sandler. Adam. <laughs> Sir Adam of Sandlerston. <laughs> It's canon. It's canon. Known, known for his epic battle cry of butthole. Right. Butthole. <laughs> oh. Oh. We've introduced God. so many terrible things in this world. Uh, Adam of Sandlerston is also renowned for ruining his own battles by just being in them. Anywho. <laughs> um... <laughs> God fuck. All right. So at this point, the crowd's kind of looking on, and Alastair's freaking out. Mo, are you trying to like restrain him or anything? Uh, Half-heartedly. Okay. I want it to look real. Excuse me. I'm... Pe people are kind of looking on. You're still freaking out. What's going on, guys? Uh. I would like to start doing some stage shenanigans, like stage punches, and trying to grapple them and I'm gonna bite just and back away. <laughs> okay, Mo, are you participating? I'll, I'll participate. Okay, so both of you make a performance check. Oh yes. <laughs> Nat twenty twenty four. Sixteen. So, Avandra and Quirin, you guys kind of step back by Zane and Zaz. And Mo and Alastor, you start putting on quite the show fight. Uh, you've both been in numerous battles as well as uh, fake fights and know how to put on a good show. Hilariously, though, and I mean hilarious to Quirin, Zane, Zaz, and Avandra, um, you guys seem to forget the town of Sutton doesn't exactly have anyone upholding the law and is a town where people take the law into their own hands and protect their new investment and their new home. So very shortly after this rolling around and grappling and biting starts, a dog pile of Sutton citizens <laughs> begins to form on top of you. As just people are just fucking throwing, like trying to pull you two apart. Um, eventually somebody accidentally punches someone else. It just becomes a writhing mass of bodies rolling around on the ground. But on occasion, um, looking on from the outside, you see a flash of gold and a flash of purple just kind of inside this mass of just people trying to, trying to stop it. And it amazes you how many people are in this small town because every couple minutes, somebody else walking by goes, I know! And they fucking drop what they're doing and hops on. Is this an accidental bar fight? This is more of a dog pile than a bar fight. This, this goes is into like a street brawl. Yeah, this is basically That's... just like a dog pile trying to make sure that nothing happens here. In in like the because fights are filled with uh uh you know, living in the moment, I'll just try and at some point like, you know, I yell at like Quirin and all them to just keep going. Okay. <laughs> So uh, I'm, I, I, I'm trying I, to portray that, like, this is your distraction. Okay. 
Vandra kind of blushes. I don't know how long I can hold him. <laughs> Vandra goes. Do we uh? Do we do we stop this? No, 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 no. We let this go for a little bit. Okay. Um, I know why there was blood up the wall. Oh. Um. The guy there, he saw um, what was left. Uh, that particular scene, um, something had ripped uh, a human male's head off. Uh, there was no body, and something had taken its face. Was that in your little book that you read before, Zane, or...? Actually, Zane, make an Arcana check. And the only reason you're getting this Arcana is because of your nat 20 earlier. Nat 20. <laughs> you're fucking kidding me, right? <laughs> Same thing. 26. <laughs> Last time it was nat 1s, this time it's nat 20s! You did it, baby! Hey, Lord, bless our world. Ha! Ha! Okay, all right. Uh, Jesus, all right. That's uh, not impossible, just improbable. Okay. Um, so Zane, you beautiful piece of shit, you. Mulling over uh, your first instinct, um, the, the Medusa, um, you've been kind of thinking about the two things that have been, um, that were in the side there, associated with illithids, and hags um being as studied as you are you knew right away that this worm type thing not an illithid tentacle or face tentacle whatever it is oh. um so you kind of had narrowed it down to being some kind of hag perhaps um and now with the knowledge that uh uh there's some kind of worm-like appendage or hair coming out of this creature as well as them being relatively small, um, possessing a great amount of strength, and now stealing something's face. Uh, this is only due to a nat 20, just making that clear. Um, you do recall a very small little blurb on the same page that the Night Hag uh, description um, was, um, describing a subset of the Night Hag um, that does not have a, a, an actual genealogical name. Uh, it doesn't appear to have uh, a known origin, but what is known is that they have worm-like hair. Um, they are incredibly strong, uh, practice necromancy, and like to steal the faces of their victims as trophies, um, often animating the faces and keeping them as pets or as companions. They are called blood hags, and they tend to live um, in uh, subterranean layers that they themselves carve out. That's what a, two nat 20s in a row will get you, is the answer to the, the whole fucking thing. Okay. So that's where we're going to take our break, because I need to go swear outside loudly for a couple minutes. So we'll be back. Um, <laughs> yeah. The dice giveth the the dice taketh away, but it's a little backwards from last week where they uh they took away and now they're they're doing the giveth thingy. We've we've built up the good karma. Apparently. So we'll be back in about five to ten minutes. Uh, dogs need to go out, habits need to be fulfilled. So stay with us and uh, see you soon. Welcome back. So Zane, you have uh, just relayed the information um, that you recalled, uh, just for everyone's sake. I know that was kind of dropped on you, and then we took a break, so I will recap um, without all the fluff. Excuse me. Um, Zane rec recounts the, uh, the information he knows about something known as a blood hag that has worm-like hair, uh, typically lives in underground, self-made layers, um, practices necromantic magic, this rather thin-looking old woman, 
uh, possesses great strength and is known, its hallmark, is uh, taking the faces of its victims and animating them, either as pets or as companions. So Zane, I assume you re relay that to the party? Yes. Well, to those who are paying attention. Yes, obviously. Mo and, uh, <clears throat> Mo and Alastor are uh, wrestling. They're doing the graps with everybody in the city, apparently. So we're looking for something terrible underground and is going to have a bunch of faces that are going to attack us. Pretty much. I don't think we should take uh, Evandra with us. Thank you. Of course not. So, uh, take her back, come back to find whoever the fuck won with this bullshit, and then, uh, go from there? I suppose so. Uh, okay, um, I can lead you back, um, to where we're, uh, where we're going. Um, it's actually almost done. Do you want to, do you want to see it? Sure, and I, I take her hand, accident forgetting. She kind of looks up at you for a second. She goes, uh... I snatched away. Oh, sorry. Um. Are you okay? I'm fine. Huh. She kind of looks at the rest of you. Let's go. She begins leading you through the city. Um city if you can call it that uh it's a little long walk uh from where you are it's about maybe 15 minutes uh and she leads you to a uh uh a red, i'd say probably about a 15 foot by 20 foot almost completed house um looks like the uh uh i'm, I'm gonna call them trusses but it's a very rudimentary kind of older building style but like the trusses of the roof are there um there's a, a small tent next to it she goes we've been sleeping in this but um uh when 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 you came up to talk to us uh daddy was just celebrating because he did those all on his own wow he's very good at building things he was very he liked dash bar who better but... than that Oh, well. Yeah. The wood here smells weird. Anywho, um, good luck. Thank you. And I wave. I'll see you all soon. God, saying stuff like that is creepy. Goodbye. Goodbye. And don't worry, it's not meant to be creepy. It'll be bittersweet when you see me next. Okay. They're walking away. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna try and signal to Mo that we should skedaddle somehow. Can I try and, uh, like, acrobatics or something my way out? You know, kind of like, you know, like they do in the cartoons. Oh, this is the cartoon episode. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, go ahead and make an acrobatics check. I'll allow it. Whereas I'm going to cast Misty Step. Okay. And just 15. fucking bamf out of there. 15? Okay, it's not grace graceful, Mo, but you are able to kind of wriggle your way out. And as you kind of, like, crawl out, <laughs> oh, you get out of the dog pile, it's like a Barrr! And, um, Alastor's next to you. Go, 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 go! <laughs> Alright. Did we... Uh... Is you guys saw which way they which way they okay, headed. You okay, were keeping okay. an eye. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll say you guys because you knew very well what you were doing. Uh, I'll go ahead and say that you guys were keeping an eye on your companions as to where they were, where they were. Hopefully, headed. they found something good. 
you actually you you head in that direction you just kind of head in a straight line um which is remarkably easy to do in this town uh just due to the fact that it's not done you can head through construction projects and stuff and mm. you guys meet up with the rest of the party um maybe a minute and a half after they've turned around and dropped off of andra at home uh, was our endeavor successful <sighs> a little bit yeah Somebody elbowed me in the junk. Ugh. You're wearing the pants still. How? They got in between the car, the the junk protects apart. I don't know. Someone's got wriggly fingers. I don't think they were there for the fight. Get us your bag back. Uh, so, I uh, learn anything? Oh, we need to find an underground lair with a hag that has faces for minions wait 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 underground that is uh zane hmm underground hmm. monster thing yeah uh i might have i might have a a way of making this slightly easier but i need an hour what are you going to do did you uh, share that item with the party, Mo? No. no. Okay. I need to sit still and concentrate for an hour. If it's underground, this should this will at least make things a little bit easier, helping us find it. All right. Well, let's pick an alley, I suppose. Or uh, maybe go back and make sure the cart wasn't stolen. Yeah, let's go to the cart. All right. All right. Lead the way. It's not hard to remember where you parked the cart. Um, you guys are at this point, having only been here for a few hours. This shanty town, pretty small. Um. Not a lot of completed big buildings to block paths. Not a lot of streets really winding around. You guys remember that you were on like a central pathway and it takes you about maybe 20 minutes. And you, you locate where the cart is. Um, for the most part, no one's really touched it. Looks like someone's moved it out of the way. Um, you get the feeling that everyone just kind of accepts here that some everything's here for building. So mm -hmm. it's been moved beside a construction project uh, that you guys had uh, park near with someone assuming that it was a part of that. All right, I'm gonna sit in the back of the cart. If you guys have any ideas as to where the general location is, um, give me an hour and I'll just uh begin uh concentrating on the armor and okay, attuning. Yes. Okay. So, Mo's doing that. Um, if you want, Mo, you can count that as a short rest. I'll say a tuning for an hour can be a short okay. rest. It's, it's not really stressful. Um, right, other four. You guys have an hour while Mo is uh, doing this. What would you guys like to do? At this point, I'd say it's about four, maybe ten after four, quarter after four. Can Zane take a short rest? Zane may take a short rest, yes. Okay. Don my armor, grab some rations, have a little snack. Yep. Hell okay. Yeah. What's Zaz doing? Zaz is gonna get something to drink, kind of keep an eye out. Okay, yep. I'll, I'll say short rest for that too. And Quirin? I'm just gonna sit next to Zaz. Okay. Before we jump cut past the short rest, does anything interesting happen? No. no. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. You guys kind of sit somberly, thinking about the information Zane has provided. Um, Zane, you kind of reflect back um, on that particular chapter of that book, and you're trying to really scour your mind for anything extra. Um, and thinking back, 
it was very much a footnote. Um, like a one paragraph, like in a separate box, like, did you know type thing you see in like textbooks? Just a little aside and you kind of get the idea that this is perhaps not something necessarily common. But the hour passes without incident. Um, at this point, it's about quarter after five. By the time Mo, the armor of the worm, is now attuned to you. Um, people are... The, the bustle of the city is starting to slow down. And the sky is starting... Um, uh, it's starting to cool down. The sun's still up. Uh, but you can see that sunsets maybe in about about two hours two and a half hours what would you guys like to do so do we know the location of a cave or a sewer or a, a like a really deep basement where are we starting well, most of this part of town is under construction so no idea not a clue is there any sort of, uh, like, sewer system or, like, drainage that I've noticed while in this part of town? No, actually. You, you've made a note that there's actually just outhouses. Well, that's gross. Um, I really hope we don't have to go into an outhouse and go through one. Because I just um, spent an hour cleaning my armor, and I'd really rather not have to do that again. DM, do these witches or hags emit any sort of arcane and, and arcane energy that I would be able to detect? Um, I'm trying to think the best way to word this. You remember that the book said that they practice necromantic magic? Mm -hmm. You assume that something that practices magic like that, and it says practice. You do remember it says specifically the word practice. You'd assume that there would be some kind of magical uh, trail or essence uh, due to that practice. Okay. Um, am I able to go around and kind of get a feel for it? For a magical essence? Yeah. Are you casting a spell? Of any kind? Um, do I even... Detect magic. Do we... Well, I'm, I don't think I have that. Um, are you asking if you can, like, walk around and look for the signs of yes. magic practice? Oh, okay, I see what you're asking, okay. Yeah, you can, you can go around and look for signs of that. Yeah, for sure. Ah, oh, Zane, um, I'll go with you. Okay. Pair of you going. Um, so I'll get to you two in a second. Mo, Quir, and Zaz, what are you three doing? Uh, I'll let them go first. Okay. Are you guys traveling as a group? or? Oh, wait, Mo, I see what you're saying. You're yeah, letting... I'm letting them speak first. Yeah. Yes, of course. Okay, so Quir and Zaz, what are you two doing? Sitting here. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Mosif. I'm gonna get off off the cart. All right. Plant my feet firmly on the ground. All right. And try to start walking around and focusing for uh, variations, empty spaces, things that are different. With my now new sixty foot tremor sense. Yes. All right. Whoa. Okay. I, I just see him like. Oh god! I just shit myself. Little steps. <laughs> Little steps. So, just just for definition's sake, um, tremor sense uh, means you can sense vibrations. Um, mm. You're fucking tough. From the <laughs> Avatar: the Last Airbender. I, my, my thought was like vibrations, but like also. I, I, you like you would I'm, be uh, able to feel like stronger vibrations and etc. Good vibrations. Et Do not <laughs> sonic vibrations. 
Um, yeah, so Mo, right now, um, there's quite a lot of vibrations in your vicinity. Um, Mo, vibe check. <laughs> um, there's a number of vibrations in your vicinity. Um, people are still kind of walking about and stuff. Uh, you get kind of heavier vi vibrations from uh, uh, from when someone's carrying something heavy or if uh, someone's pushing a cart. Uh, you get lighter vibrations when someone's walking. Um, right now, with where you're standing, uh, there's a lot of vibrations, and you're aware of them. They don't kind of overwhelm you. It's mm -hmm. not like someone's screaming in your ear, but you're aware of all vibrations within that 60 feet. Um, there's not... There's not anything, there's not any really huge vibrations. Um, and where you're standing right now, there doesn't seem to be any vibrations below you. Okay. I'm just going to slowly expand my uh, my field of search. And then... Okay. Did we follow so... him? Buzz? Mm -hmm. I guess. We're not doing anything else. There. All right. So you two are following Mo. Yep. All right. So party A, Zane and Alaster. What are you two doing? I guess Zane's kind of just scanning the area for any signs of the arcane. I, I almost looking said... for like a like residue of magical essence or are we looking for like a, a a place like an altar or are we looking for like a like a potions sort of um i'm just looking for any trace well if you find one let me know i can use um detect magic and help you out <sighs> same does the marge simpson noise <laughs> all right so, Zane, make an investigation check for me, please. Bokeh. Don't you bokeh me. I swear to God, if it's a nat 20, I'm going to come into that room and I'm going to throw your fan at you. Five. <laughs> oh, oh, come on, it's her only fan. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um... Looking around, it's a lot of sawdust and stone dust. Not a, not really a, a place where there's a lot of magical reagents or um, signs of, say, fire or acid damage or anything like that. Nothing, nothing in your vicinity, Zane, seems seems to be more than just hand hand built things. Nothing arcane. Really what if we go back to, to um, the crime scene where we found that weird-looking belt thing? But, you know, I couldn't fit in because my shoulders were very large. Zane drugs has swords there. Okay. You guys head towards... Now, are you headed to the first crime scene you saw? The most recent one? Or are you headed yeah. to the second one that Zaz found? I, I I would suggest we go to the most recent. Yeah, most recent. Okay. Music stopped. Yes, it did. <laughs> All right, so. The suspense. Oops. One sec, little crinkly's coming because I pulled my microphone off of my lapel. All right, so. Um, yeah, you guys, uh, you head to the newest crime scene. Still fairly quiet. There doesn't seem to be anyone around. Still looking for the same thing? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to detect magic. Okay. I can, yeah. And Zane, are you investigating as well? Yes. Okay, so Zane make an investigation check. Just Alaster. Did. Oh, mm -hmm. you did? I didn't see that. What's that here? Sorry, I was changing the music. 13. Okay, um... Zane, you notice um, uh, kind of a, a I'm trying to think of the best way to describe it. Like, a, I guess it would be like the magical equivalent of GSR, 
that's gunshot residue. Um, it's against the wall, and it looks like some kind of um, uh, some kind of uh, uh, magical blade or spell was cast at about neck height. At what height? About neck, neck height. Neck height. Um, for what you'd assume uh, to be a, either a short human or a tall dwarf. Um. Yeah, there, there. You see various uh, signs of um, uh, just how the ground has been blown away unnaturally. Um. Yeah, there was magic here for sure. Um, just it's hard to really pinpoint what type of magic. Um, Alaster. Yeah. Um, could you read me detect magic real quick? For the duration, you sense the presence of magic within 30 feet of you. If you sense magic in this way, you can use your action to see a faint aura around any visible creature or object in the area that bears magic, and you learn its school of magic, if any. The, pel can, uh, the spell can penetrate most barriers, but it is blocked by a foot of stone, inch of common steel, a thin sheet of lead, or three feet of wood or dirt. Door. 30 feet. There doesn't really seem to be anything magical right here. Zane, you're able to discern that there was magic here. Magic was cast here. But at the current moment, there's nothing magical here. Yeah, I'm not really picking anything up. Um, this, uh, there's no really... Not really. In it. See, I was kind of hoping for like, you know, footprints or something I could follow. I don't really use the tip magic very often. Um. Zane shrugs. To, to the other one, maybe. Yeah, let's let's go. Sure. sure. What? What? <laughs> Zaz, did you sneak up behind them? Sorry, no. <clears throat> I was uh, responding out loud to a, a text I was reading. My bad. Ah, <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Don't worry, we've all done that. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. Um. Okay, so you guys hit the other one. Um, jump cut. Mo is kind of doing the uh, the baby fawn on ice walk. Um. Mystic back uh, a bit of a distance. Yeah. Okay. Mo, go ahead and make an investigation check. Okay. And with so many people walking about, yeah, it's hard to really discern anything strange. Hmm. I'm gonna just walk over to Quirin. Okay. No. Oh no, he's walking so back. Excuse me. It's probably not here. Maybe it's somewhere outside the town, or hidden underneath one of the houses. Oh, that well, makes sense. How long does this tremor sense thing last? Uh, as long as I focus on it. Well then, let's go for a walk. Hmm. You'll stick uh, a little bit away from you. Do this weird kind of stretched leg, weird step-by-step step thing it's a it's a unique way of focusing that i'm not accustomed to i can uh, sense a lot of vibrations and movement and i still know where you are i figured that otherwise you would not have been able to come back and come directly to me hmm. This might make sneaking up on hard. <laughs> All right, I'll uh, I'll walk towards the in the direction of the crime, and continue okay. my tremor sense. All right. 
So, uh, Zane and Alastair, you guys head to the second crime scene. I does, it take same longer, thing. does it take longer than 10 minutes to get there? It would. Fuck. Yes, unfortunately. Alrighty. Um, Zane, you're still doing the, um, uh, like, the look for the arcane? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and make your investigation. 16. 16. Um, I will also make an investigation check. Okay, go ahead and make an investigation check. Uh, yeah. Uh, Dice God. 16. Okay. Um, you get to the crime scene where you found the, the piece of what you could assume is the blood hag's hair. Um, you're kind of feeling around the walls. Um, And you both kind of find it at the same time. I'm kind of looking up. Um, on the houses, um, probably a good maybe 10 to 12 feet up, you notice that on like parallel sides, there is claw marks that kind of look like they slide downwards, as if something was holding on here and slid down. Uh, okay. Um, I'm going to check the ground at that level to see if there's any sort of, like, hidden door or, like, a like a switch or, or something. Well, the, at the ground at that level would be air. Like, it's above where the murder happened. There's claw marks about 10 to, oh. 10 to 12 up. 10 to 12 Sorry, up. I, miss, yeah. I missed that. Are yeah, no worries. Are these just regular buildings? For the most part, yeah, they look just pretty normal. Just shanty houses? Uh, no, these uh, these ones they're fairly uh, fairly new completed uh, constructions. Okay. Um, are the marks like really really bad? Uh, yeah, it looks like something had really dug its fingers in here. Um, as if to hold itself. Like, in the air? Like, yeah, kind of like Spider-Man style, like you know? Like a surprise attack. Yeah. Like okay. Attack. Hmm. Um. I'm gonna try and scale the wall to get up on top of the building. Okay. Make a, uh, athletics check. You're just too damn big, Alaster. You get up to the top. Um, you get up you get pretty easily. You wedge yourself uh, with a, a foot on either side. and You know you know how you used to climb up doorways as a kid? Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, due to your size, when you get up to the part where the two roofs overlap, you just can't weasel your way through. Hmm. Can I, like, I, I can't poke my head above and see anything on top of the roofs or anything? Yeah, I'd say you could poke your poke your head up and look through, like, the six-inch space. Yeah. Um, it just looks like roof from that view. Okay. Yeah. These shingles need replacing. Oh. <laughs> They're literally brand new. <laughs> uh, I'll slide back down. Um, uh, Zane... Uh, hmm? We could go and talk to the people who inhabit these houses and see if they know of anything. Yeah, let's do it. Go around to the front door and knock on it and wait for someone or an okay. answer, maybe. Um, you head around the far side, come to the first house, you knock on the door. You wait for a bit. No one comes out. There's a window in the front. You kind of peer in. There doesn't appear to be any lights on. Like candles lit or anything. Um, you head over to the second house, uh, kind of the taller of the two. Knock on the door, and a a, a rather uh, pale-looking human male sticks his head out. He's got kind of like the Lemmy mustache going on. Mm. Kind of pokes his head out and goes, "Can 
Can I help you? Uh, yes. Uh, good evening, sir. Um, I, I just would like to know, um, you seem to have some damage on the side of your building. Has anybody come to talk to you about that? Yes, unfortunately. I'm aware of what occurred. Um, you wouldn't happen to have heard anything over the past, you know, whenever this took place. Uh, you know, people walking on a roof or, or commotion around here, you know, besides a horrible murder. Are you with the, um... Oh, what do they call themselves? The Sutton Squad, by chance? Oh, oh lord. Um, that's not... That's not a we're more independent um uh beastie hunters put it that way cell mm. swords uh, yes exactly mm. well I'll tell you what I told those buffoons all I heard was some light thumping on my roof the house itself was fairly empty the noise reverberates. Unfortunately, by the time I got outside to investigate whatever had perched itself on top of my roof, I was in time to hear a scream followed by quite a terrifying ripping sound. The crowd formed after that. Uh, excellent. I do have one more question for you before I uh, let you get back to your evening. Um, uh, did, would you know of any place that has uh, freshly broken ground? Um, a, a place maybe of, of uh, you know, kids like to go into caves and, and, you know, it's spooky and they try and get the friends to go in or something. Uh, is there any sort of that lore around here? Hmm. I can't recall any caves or cabins. I don't believe they started on a sewer project. Matter of fact, I don't believe many people are overly keen to take the extra time to to dig a cellar. Um, most are most are fine with just having a foundation and a ground floor. The only project I can think of that has broken any ground relatively deep would be the tavern. Well, that is our next place to canvas. Um, well, thank you for your time, and this is for you, and I'll give him two gold. He kind of looks at it and goes, no thank you. Uh, uh sure. Uh, okay, uh, well, I will, um, make a charitable donation in your name, Mr. Mr. is fine. Excellent. You have yourself an excellent evening. You as well. He shuts the door. Well, that's a creepy old man, Zane, but, uh, the tavern. Uh, do you want to let, uh, the rest of the idiots know that we're going in that direction? Yeah. Alright. Jump cut! Mo, Quirin, and Zaz, what are you guys doing? Just giving him a large amount of distance. So okay. Instead of finding out the inner workings of Lichdom, we are doing this. It's like a kid playing with a metal detector for the first time. Yeah, pretty much. Mo, make an investigation check. Sixteen. Sixteen. Um... Eventually, you do get a ping. Um, a vibration below ground. Um, maybe about... I'd say maybe 30 
five to forty feet below ground. Um, and it's kind of off to your, like your front right. And looking in that direction, um, there is uh, uh, the place there where uh, uh, your little scrap had begun. Um, there's two individuals sitting in the uh, in the uh, Sutton Squad little box. Uh, different individuals now at this point, uh, right next to uh, the framework of what's going to be the tavern. I'm gonna motion to Quirin and Taz. Okay. Come on. Head on over. All right. I think I found it. Okay. Like at this point, Alaster and Zane, you guys kind of walking under the clearing. You see the three of them at the uh, the spot where the tavern's being built. Oh, serendipitous. Um, uh, lads, uh, we've got good information of the only place that they've broken ground around here is in the new tavern. Uh, so I was probably... just going to say that there's something 30-ish feet down moving around. Well, let's and go. It's the only place so far. Just trying not to make eye contact with the Sutton bitches. Hey. Hey, guess what? what I've what? got a sword and I use thought. Okay. The fact you said serendipitous? Surprising to me. <laughs> the five syllable word. I have read a few books. He goes back to the one syllables. Have read a few books. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, fair, fair, fair okay. So at this point, you're all uh, standing there uh, talking. Mo and Zane, you're the only ones really not participating in this conversation. Really, what are you two doing? Kind of just looking vacantly. Okay. Mm -hmm. 30 feet is a long way down. It is. And Too looking long. at the <laughs> Looking at the uh at the ground, it looks like a freshly dug hole. Um Quirin, you've been here before. Um at this point, I guess if you guys want to investigate, you can make investigation checks. If you're looking around, you can make perception checks. What would you guys like to do? Uh, Sorry, did we establish that anything was on this plot of land? The tavern. The, yeah, the tavern. It's like they've dug the hole where they're going to put a cellar. Um, and there's large strip logs uh, forming the beginnings of the frame of what's going to be the tavern. Mm -hmm. Set into the corners of that. It's kind of like it's kind of like an outline, a rough outline. Can I persuade the tavern to give me information? No, no you <laughs> I'm cannot. Just, I'm just gonna look around. Okay, you're uh, just I'll, look. Are you sorry? Go ahead. I was gonna say I'll make a perception check. To okay, perception. Square in perception or investigation. Uh, investigation. Just looking for okay, any signs of anything. Okay, investigation. Yeah. Also perception. Perception from Zaz. Zane? Anything? Um, can I Holy try shit. and gather how many people are um, either in I'll the grounds a... around the tavern? Okay, yep. Perception. And Zane? Investigation or something? Investigation, sure. Oh, we're all higher than 20 so far. Uh -huh. Not me! <laughs> <laughs> Second two of the night. Not me. What she get from those? You, you're the one who gave the whole farm away, so... All right, so, Alaster, you were uh, nat 20, and that was a uh, investigation check? That was a perception to perception. find... Perception. You know, the best um, way to get into the cellar or whatever. The, uh... You notice the ground itself, Alaster, um, sinks into the center. There seems to be a low point in the middle. Hmm. Um, Quirin, uh, you notice this too, um, the difference here 
is Alaster, you notice um, that the spot it seems to be sinking into is a distinct square. Um, Mo looking around, there's just people. It's it's getting slower in the day, but there's still people around. Um, Zane, you see a pretty rock. Um, and Zaz, you notice a, uh, a, a particularly interesting fungus on uh, one of the posts of the uh, tavern frame. Cool. Um, a fungus known as Death Bloom that seems to grow wherever necromantic magic is uh, present and is known to make things violently ill. Am yeah, I going to have any cats adding it to my shoulder? Make a nature check. My convoy? Uh, give me a sec. Yeah. Convoy. Natural 20. <laughs> is it? Yep. Uh, Death Bloom is an invasive species and completely kills all other fungus around it. Okay. Uh, Bullet dodged. Keep it in a pocket. Is it common knowledge that this kind of mushroom will be found around necrotic or necromancy? Um, no. Uh, the only reason I gave you that is because you are mushroom attuned. Hmm. Mushroom attuned. Yes. I'm going to relay, uh, relay that then. Hmm. Quirin, you recognize this mushroom as the one you nibbled on earlier. Yep. I'm not saying a fucking word about it. <laughs> okay. Well, um, um, it seems like there's some sort of square object in the ground. Maybe a trapdoor or, or or some sort of passageway, right, right here. And I'll go stand on top of it. Okay. Um. Now that he points it out, you guys can see it. Hmm. Oh, but oh. it's 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 one of those things. It's like. You guys really only see it when you kind of tilt your head the right way, and the kind of setting sun is giving the, um, uh, what's it called, a draped light. It's kind of getting that draped light over it. It's kind of throwing the shadows weird, and you're like, oh, yeah, I guess that is kind of a square. Huh. Um, Jump. I'm gonna... I will do a light hop. See what happens. Mo, you feel a vibration that resonates 35 feet downwards. Can I tell the direction that the... Like, straight it, down. Uh, um... Still has a bit of give. Try harder. Uh, uh, no, 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 Alastor, stop jumping on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that goes one direction. Uh, um, and that is straight down 30 feet. So, um, uh, well, we have no idea if there's another exit, so. Would I have. Would his hopping have been enough for me to sense branching pathways? No. No. I'm I'm gonna get down and see if I can. I'm gonna get down. Uh, get down, get down. <laughs> Alaster uh, boogie. Do, do, do. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm gonna see if I can like find an opening or or like try and run my fingers across it to see if it's like like wood slats or you know something like that. Okay. Yeah. You uh. I'm not gonna make you roll for this because um reasons. Um. It just appears to be the formation of the earth. There's no seam. Hmm. I'm going to take my sword, I'm going to plunge it into the center. Okay. Um It goes for about maybe two and a half inches. And then seems to kind of get jammed in like harder dirt. Hmm. All right, either we dig or somebody has some sort of way to remove a lot of dirt. Yes, my remove dirt spell. It's called move earth, but it is. <laughs> it's called move earth. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, remove dirt. 
You know what? I like the I like the way it was phrased. Now my move dirt spell. That's a lot better. Because there's that's like literally a, what it is. There's like a fucking farmer somewhere. He's like, ah, oh, that's my my remove dirt spell. Remove, create, store dirt. Ah, uh, I'm Dirt Farmer Joe. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think that uh, that I don't think Mold Earth can even create dirt. I think it's just move it and manipulate. I think it can just move it. Yeah. Oh. Well, he's a fucking dirt dirt mancer. Okay. <laughs> uh, do we want to go down there or? It's either that or we wait for it to come back up, which we don't know if it's going to come from this angle. Because it could be from anywhere else. So either we go down and kill it or we wait for it to kill something else. Well, I, I assume that this there can't be too many paths. Ways. Uh. Did you see anything else when you were walking around? No. Just this. Uh, but also, it... It would take a lot of work, you know, dig to, I assume, this central point from all the places. Can't we throw, like, explosions down the hole or something? Maybe fill Ooh. it with water? That's the problem, is there's no hole to throw anything into. Is Ooh. there any, are there any, like, um, like, construction equipment, shovels, pickaxes, saws, anything like that kicking around? No, it seems, it seems, um, uh, this particular construction site, um, being kind of like a public works project, everyone's taking their tools elsewhere. Mm okay. Well, Zaz, remember that... Weird spell that you had that makes the giant fissures. Uh, uh, yes. Do you think that would work with the hole? Or does anybody have anything major explosive? I could hit it really hard. Explosions? N no. Okay, so the only two options that I can think of is either we dig, Daz uses his earth thing, or the withered wand that Zane has, but it did blow that hole in. Hey, we could try that. Yes. Zane yes. pulls it out. Let me get off of it first. <sighs> I move <it> back. Quinn, <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> 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 right. do you think 30 feet back is safe enough? I can tell you it's not. 40? Let's all get out of the hole and let Zane do what he needs to. <laughs> sure. Okay. So, Zane steps back. Okay. Does the rest of the group step back? We step back well yes. behind yeah. you. Okay, well, Zane steps back behind you guys. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Right. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Um, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll shield you from debris. Sure. I'll kind of put my hand up in front of my face. I'm giving another 30 feet. <laughs> I'm gonna You're move in back. someone's house. Okay, you guys are pretty far back. Okay. Yeah. So I turn to the group and I say, Now, so far I've seen this one do a lot of things. And if it does what I want it to do, which I think it will, it's going to attract a lot of attention. Are you sure you want to do this? I don't care. <laughs> I mean, I can hit it and make a thunderclap that everybody in 300 feet will hear. So, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty good with this. All right. And Zane points the wand of wonder towards the trap or the 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 square, the trap, the trap okay. hole, the square, <laughs> and casts with the wand of wonder. Well, your D100, Zane. Please don't turn into another <laughs> stench cloud. <laughs> On oh, butterflies. E! 88. Are we going by the same guide? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are we using the same guide? Or did yeah. you reverse it to continue? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why they're laughing. We'll see. 
<laughs> Man, you were so close. Oh. Okay. Um, Zane, do you have any, like, how do you stand and point the wand? Like Gilderoy Lockhart. So as he kind of stands there, goes, Blammo! Um, a, a, a refracting light forms at the end of this wand, and then just, and because I rolled a four on the d4, just for a good, like, three seconds, 40 gems just shoot out of the end of the wand and just and just miraculously this door uh let me okay um with the concentrated 40 damage this stream of rubies and sapphires does um a small hole is dug out just due to diamond erosion i'm going to say and there's maybe a hole the size of a golf ball now um in the spot where uh all the gems hit and there's 40 gems lying on the ground zane goes and picks one up huh it's real Okay, we're just going Zane to pockets it. Okay. <laughs> we'll leave him back to the up. group. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so are you, there is forty gems to pick up. Yeah. How are they Zane being Zane starts pocket them pocketing them slowly. Okay. Each gem is worth one gold piece. Okay. Huh. Uh, congratulations, Zane. Your wand produced a bunch of rocks. Does anyone remember the sound that the gems make in Spyro? Oh, Christ. That. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, in the in the hole that the, the gems created, uh, is it deeper than what my sword would have got? Yes. Alright, I'm gonna try and widen the hole and see if, uh, see if there's anything under there. Yeah, you secure the tip of your sword in, and you kind of do the twisting thing to kind of to work that divot out. Um, and you're slowly but surely um, opening it up. At this point, maybe it's about a six to seven inch diameter hole. And you look down and there appears to be a hole straight down and a wooden ladder on one side. Hmm. Zana, I don't know if I've ever said this to you before, but uh, you are quite the gem. Thank you. Just a note, you can use the Wand of Wonder seven times a day. Alright, let's try this again. He cracks his knuckles. <laughs> uh, uh, one second. I am an agent of chaos. Right here. <laughs> but the hole is only seven inches wide. And Zane, your, your previous cast was successful. Alright, so everyone's at the same distance now, again? Yeah. yeah. At this point, people are kind of poking their heads around going, what in the fuck? Uh, Alastor, it might be a good time to cast that, uh, that noise that you were talking about. What, so we can have more people show up when there's a giant clap of thunder at the top? No, throw, <laughs> throw your voice, you know? Can you make it in, happen in, like, the opposite end of town? No, my sword makes, unless I'm gonna throw my sword across town, I know. Yeet! The almighty know, maybe heat. You can, like, cast it on a rock and throw the rock, and then whatever the rock hits makes that now, noise. I don't you know, know devil's that... advocates, loose grasp of magic. <laughs> <laughs> you know that thing that happens when I get mad, and then all of a sudden my sword starts on low, on fire, and then I hit something and it lights on fire. Like that's my whole thing. Well, I have another thing. Except can we can we just of... focus on the hole? There is something taking faces here. Until you said the faces part, I was very proud of you, Quinn. I, I, I like your, uh, I like your turn. Hola. Yes. Zane, cast the thing. Oh, you <laughs> the Hey, Zane's casting the thing. All right, roll a d100. Nine. 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 Oh, okay. Okay. <sighs> Pick a color. Green, 
Blue or violet? Violet. I figured. Um. Suddenly, uh, the square of dirt that is above the shaft is outlined in a violent light. As Zane's Wand of Wonder casts Fairy Fire. Oh. Okay, well now we can all see it clearer. Does anybody have like a sh- <laughs> And Zane casts it again. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, roll D100. This is the best item in the whole game. 81. 81. Oh no. Is 81 what I think it is? <laughs> Please tell me it's more gems. <laughs> Zane just vanishes. And he casts it again. <laughs> okay, roll a d100. Keep track what? of how many times you're casting it. That's four. Yes! What did you roll? 72. That's what you're looking for, eh? Hell yeah! Alright. Um... Yeah, go ahead and, uh, huh. Yeah, go ahead and ca roll 8d6. Did it cast Fireball? It cast Fireball. 33. Um, with the 40 points of damage and the 33 points of damage, this, this door is, is dead. Um, <laughs> as out of nowhere, you hear, hi-ya, and just, <laughs> as fire what? just comes out of nowhere and you just see this dirt just kind of go <laughs> into the air and you see people kind of go oh what's happening to our tavern as there is now a crater and a hole at the bottom of that crater all right let's go don't want to <laughs> you time. hear from nowhere zane can so you see my footprints on the f on the ground can yes. they see my footprints on the ground? Okay, I start heading over. Oh, wait. Uh, you vanished. Uh, you came back after Fireball appeared. No. Yeah, because you cast a spell. Who's going first? I'll, I'll go I first. I say let tap light on you. This is what I was meant to be. <laughs> I'll go down. I was hoping that the invisible person could go first. That apparently is no longer an option. Uh, where? Uh, I'll climb down the hole. Okay. Everyone else following, or...? Yep, the yep. Giant, giant beacon that is Alastor. Okay. Um, Alastor, eventually, as you're, you're uh, climbing down, you come into um, a cavern. Uh, the shaft opens up at the at the bottom, and you come into a cavern, and there's candles um, on the ground, um, just in various places around the edge. Um, in the center of the cavern, there appears to be three large pillars, uh, support pillars, uh, triangulated around some form of arcane runic circle. And in the center, there appears to be a, uh, uh, a very shallow, almost pan-like um, um, implement uh, that's containing, uh, from what you can tell, a ruby fluid. Uh, there's large boulders everywhere. Um, and you can kind of hear um, from behind one of the pillars, you hear, yes, yes. Uh, you guys all pop down. The 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 runic circle is it? How is it formed on the ground? Is it like something that's laid on top? Is it carved in? Is um, it... make a perception check. Okay. Can I oh, shoot? Well, that's plus two, so six. Six. You can't tell. You just see kind of purple glowing. Okay. Can, Mo, you were going to say I something? Can sense how many things are down here other than us? Um, other than you? Yeah. You sense one. Well, uh, bright side, there's only one other thing down here. Slowly turn towards Zane. You're going what? to close it again, or...? I mean, is that really appropriate? We've had luck this far. We got gems, you went invisible, and then there was an explosion, and... Oh, yeah, there was... It, it turned the color. Has been so... stealing face. 
Yeah, so should, why not? Should we just Do all cast spells in its general terrain? No, no, no. I'll I'll use it. Want me to lure it out into the, the open? Yes, yes, yes. Let's do that first. How, f how far away is it? Uh, can I tell how far away it is? Um, probably. Ooh. Uh, can I... How far away... You can tell that it's behind... Uh, the pillar in front of you to the right once the map loads up for you. Oh. Some late game action. Oh, wow. Nine and twelve. Yep, it be the, it be the uh, incredibly large single image. Um, huh. Tell me once everybody's in. I'm almost done. I'm in. Yep. I am also in. I am uh, not. Slow ass computer. It's also a big image. I need to start making it smaller. <laughs> the suspense is killing. <coughs> huh? oh. Damn you, Trisket! Well, it is big. <laughs> That's what she said. All right, is everybody in? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so the creature in question would be about right there. Mo, you'd be able to tell what Trevor sounds. I'm gonna give them a rough bearing based on my uh, mystical earth sensing ability. Alrighty. And these dark circles are pillars? Those are the pillars, yes. Okay. Um, I am going to uh I'm going to cast Searing Smite preemptively. Okay. And I'm going to uh, head up to see if I can see it. I mean, I'm glowing. It's not like I can hide. You can certainly try. Hey! Wait. You! It's casting. <laughs> can I... And I step right here. Uh, <laughs> and I point the Wand of Wonder at him. I'll move. Okay. Zane, you have the Wand of Wonder at it? Yep, I'm casting it. Okay, it turns and goes, Can I help you? And its focus kind of shifts to Zane and goes, What is... Well, your D100. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 94. It's such a good number. And a good year. Young ass bitch. Whatever you say, old Ooh, man. Ooh, that's, that's, <laughs> that's a pretty good one. But, but is it... Oh no, this is bad. I No, this is bad. This is very bad. For you guys. <laughs> Anyone in a 30 foot radius, it's bad. Well, but it, it's a spell you choose where. Um, so Mo and Alaster and Zane. Yeah, Zane as well. Um, I need you guys to make con saving throws. Okay. Uh, uh, you're within 10 feet of me, so I had plus four. 18. Okay. That turns into a 22 for you then. Uh, 17. Yep. Uh, and Mo? What about her? Uh, uh, I've already made the made the roll for her. 6 plus 4 plus 
Um, oh, sorry, I did that. I I, I was viewing the item card. Yep. Wrong chat. Oh, Just copy paste it. Fifteen. Fifteen. So you all, all three of you succeed. And so does she. Damn. As, sorry, it's only a DC 15. Um, there's a b blinding flash of light. She goes, ah! <sighs> At this point, you see her hair wriggling, and you see these maggot-like lamprey worms kind of stick up as... And almost like grudge style, she right up to you, yeah. Laster. And that's what we're going to end tonight's session. Ah. <laughs> and we will roll for initiative next week. Oh, hag fight. That's going to be. Man. Uh, I have a hag. <laughs> Man. I have a disgusting con while I'm uh, around a Laster. Yes, you do. Plus yes. 11. It's, it's, it's now up to seven. Jeez. Just naturally, because of that armor. I'm all right. for a charisma save. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all for sticking with us. Um, it's It was an interesting session. Started slow, picked up near the end. Wand of Wonder was used a lot. Probably, I think Wand of Wonder was used more this session than it was all such a at command. all previously. Yeah. So, as always, uh, Thank you for stopping by. And, um, bon nuit. Bon nuit. Bon nuit. Bon nuit. Bon nuit. Goodbye. Thanks, bye.